Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to Synchronicity Web TV. I am your astrologer and your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. Well, I am just so excited and grateful and elated to celebrate with you, Kai Pacha. Uh, he is a brilliant YouTube astrologer. He has such a presence online, and he has over 40 years as an astrologer and in the spiritual arts, the esoteric arts. And just bring so much love, so much wisdom out into the digital space, into the digital sphere. And we have got a lot to celebrate today. So I'm very, very excited to introduce to you and to celebrate with you, Kai Pacha. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Nadia. This is wonderful. Great. Yeah. Really nice to maybe uh, meet some new folks. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. And so how about this? Let's start with you telling me a little bit about your beginning, because I think a lot of people already know who you are, especially on YouTube. You've got a wildly popular YouTube channel. And I think I was telling you that I've kind of seen you in passing over the years. And I've, I, I make it a point not to watch other astrologers because I uh, really don't want to accidentally plagiarize anybody. That's my academic background. But what I remember is from the videos I've seen of you, you're on a beach, you're on a rock, you're looking in the camera, and there's just this energy coming out of you of love and wisdom. Uh, and so I can understand why your channel is so wildly uh, popular. So tell us about how you began your astrological journey. It was a long time ago in a land far away. <laughs> in this particular life anyway. Those are the howler monkeys. I'm. Uh, oh, okay. They, uh, they so, hang out uh, right outside the window, and uh, I'm in Costa Rica. And so if people are wondering, what's that swooshing sound? You've got monkeys outside. That's amazing. They're very loud, especially at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. It's not usually the time of day that they get noisy. Yeah, it's pretty trippy. Well, so. that opens up a whole other series of questions. But okay, let's start with the land far, far ago and stuff. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I just, um, I left Chicago as, as soon as I could at 17 and I uh, got a pickup truck and uh, headed out to California. And I plopped down right next door to an astrologer. Wow, I love it. And, and one afternoon he brought me over to his place and uh, uh, did up my chart and we just talked about it all afternoon and he completely turned my entire my entire head around because I, uh, you know, I was born on July 23rd. I didn't even know if I was Cancer or Leo at that point. I didn't pay any attention to astrology. Uh, so when he opened me up to reincarnation and karma and uh, I better watch what I'm doing, I, I kind of, uh, you know, I had a, a major opening that was these, you know, that great aha moment that said, boy, I better start to be a little more conscious about my choices. And uh, I got into astrology and the I Ching and the Tarot and Edgar Cayce and dreams and- <laughs> you know, I love I it, all, I love I did it. all the charts of my family, all the charts of my friends. Uh, you know, I just dove a hundred percent, you know, into it and uh, have been, been uh, blown away, fascinated, in awe and wonder ever since, pretty much. And so, um, can I ask, was there something happening in your chart that would indicate this, you know, awakening or a shift? Was it a Uranus transit or what was happening? I mean, it was right around my nor the moon's node return. Oh, okay. Well, that'll do it. Yeah. Right? I yeah. So, I it's you aligning with what I like to call a higher, more loving vision for your life, but really the promises that your soul made for this lifetime, uh, it sounds like there was that alignment that happened, which happens for some people, a lot of people, uh, when they have their nodal return. Right, right. I mean, it's the soul destiny. So it just opened up for me at that time. And, and of course, it's been a long journey since then. I've, I've done many other things. I didn't really start making a living as an astrologer, I mean, I, uh, I raised three kids and, uh, you know, had, uh, 
a number of other uh, occupations with my Gemini moon in the 10th house. <laughs> yeah, of course. You know? But then, uh, then in 2009, I mean, I, I, I was doing it professionally from uh, the late 90s. But then in 2009, I think was a big turning point. I did a Kundalini yoga teacher training and I began meditating and doing yoga every morning for, you know, an hour and a half and the cold shower and the whole kind of, uh, you know, yoga routine. And I started seeing different things, approaching the chart in different ways, seeing the world in different ways, seeing uh, people and, <laughs> and monkeys. Okay. And I know, I love it. <laughs> I know. Way. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Well, speaking of the monkeys and stuff, right. Tell me about your Costa Rica journey. Like what brought you there? How long have you been there? Why do you love it? <laughs> yeah. The monkeys yeah. is one. Yeah. <laughs> right. I love it. That they're well, I went to Chicago, uh, you know, to California after California. I wanted to get further away from the United States uh, that spends 60% of their budget on the military. Uh, you know, and uh, so I went out to Hawaii and uh, I was in Hawaii for and I got used to the tropics mm -hmm. uh, and that was that was very beautiful for a while. But I, uh, I actually came to Costa Rica to do a workshop. I'm, I'm, I, I travel around uh, like it sounds you do also. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I travel around doing uh, uh, yoga and astrology workshops. And I came to Costa Rica to give one, and I fell in love with my wife, Laura. Oh, how beautiful. Uh, and so was, how uh, long ago was that? That was in 2013. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. You know, love works that way. I think there's like a love that we have for like the person mm -hmm. that we may meet in a place. But then there's also love for the place itself, you know, like we end up having a relationship with the, the land or the city or the country. And that becomes a powerful relationship too. Like they end up um, serving each other in some way, you know, the love yeah. for a person and the love for a place. Yeah. Now, and I'm here in a, uh, it's a permaculture community uh -huh. uh, where we were growing our own food and we get big baskets out of the garden every week and it's all organic and there's people from 26 different countries living here and uh, there's a beautiful river nearby and it's uh it's a very different uh reality than than I uh could experience uh of all my years in the in the United States and um there's no military here at all and it's a very the the vibration is very different <laughs> you I've have heard, to come yeah, by I, golly you need to come to costa rica nadia <laughs> it's interesting you say that because i will be coming won't i <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i am so 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 very excited uh to announce to friends and fans out there to present kaipacha not only because you're an amazing person and the first time i spoke to you i was like wow this is an amazing person uh, and we have some beautiful synastry in our charts as well and commonalities and similarities, but also because you do something very, very special in Costa Rica and the next one is coming up in May. So tell us about Astrology Rising. Yes! <laughs> astrology Rising. Oh, yes. goodness. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, it was uh, it was a number of years ago I started doing the Pele Report. I lived on Ho Hawaii, and Pele was the goddess of the volcano. Mm. So I, I actually lived at the foot of the volcano, and I, I watched the lava pour out out of my bedroom window every night. Wow. And, uh, and I really felt connected to the feminine, the deep, powerful feminine energy, and of course, in astrology, that is earth and water. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the masculine is fire and air. Mm -hmm. And I, I've, I've striven pretty much, you know, from that time to take astrology out of being an intellectual, academic, fire and air, uh, you know, lecturing and learning and predicting uh, uh, far more into an embodied feeling soul experience. Mm. Uh, and, and so I've, uh, I've gotten together. I mean, my, my, my practice kind of grew. So I, I've, uh, I have, uh, uh, I call it the dream team. Uh, it's uh, seven other astrologers. 
that uh, are also working with me and I started this community. So I have an online community of people. We're, we've got a Facebook group page and we have a forum and we send them videos every week. And, you know, we've got, you know, over a thousand people together, but you know, it's online. It's online. And, 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 Which and is it's very just, air, isn't it? Yeah. yeah and, and everybody, you know, they get to know each other and they're sending photos and videos and we're, da, da, da. And, and finally in 2017, the, the North node was going into Leo. I said, you know what? We have to get, have, you know, a live flesh and blood, you know, just really a uh, movement into, uh, you know, it was astrology rising. Um, and that, that one actually was very much about the North Node moving into Leo. Everybody brought costumes yeah. and formed groups and did astrologically based or centered, uh, you know, plays or dramas or songs or readings or, so it was all about moving and living and we did astro drama and constellation work and yoga and, you know, dancing on the beach and fires on the beach. And it was just really a time of, you know, people coming together in, in a real time, real life way to uh, to learn and grow and share astrology and they come into these environments often whether it's in a different country or a different community and they're surrounded by like-minded people like we do in these very spaces that we create right with astrology and other spiritual arts and other esoteric arts and it really becomes um, sort of a catalyst, a defining experience in many ways. It is to immerse yourself in a whole other energy than you're used to, and you leave changed in some way, and everybody changes in their own unique ways, but it is the type of thing that stays with you long after it's over. And so we have got, and I say we for a good reason, but we have got a very special announcement in this video that we're making and a very special event coming up. Drum roll, please. A very special announcement here. And that is that I have the great privilege and honor of being a part of your vision for the next big event that you are doing in Costa Rica called Astrology Rising. 2020. And 2020. And Unity in diversity. And Nadia it. is our special, special, special guest. Yay. She's a surprise. You are our you're our big surprise because we we you know we have the website and we have even your talks uh you know listed and we have a little blank picture for you and, and we're building all of this you know, uh, excitement around. So this is the grand release. And I'm, uh, I'm so uh, in, in a space of gratitude for you and, and for you sharing, for you willing to, you know, come, you know, into a group of folks. I, I understand, you know, some of us, but well, not look, all of us. I, I am very, very uh, grateful to be part of your vision. And at the same time, I'm really honored because this is a stellar staff. I mean, a stellar faculty. This is really uh, to be among the best of the best in the world in astrology today uh, as part of this event. That is an honor and a privilege in and of itself as well. And so we've got huge speakers, like really, like I said, world renowned big dog astrologers are gonna be a part of this. <laughs> so you have got Rick Levine, you have got Maurice Fernandez, uh, who else is there? Christina Claudel, right? Yes. And, and Ju um, Julia is from uh, the CIA. She runs the CIA, yes, basically, Julia down in Australia. Amazing. Yes, Julia yeah. is just such an amazing person. And she has like probably the biggest astrology Facebook page in the world with over a million yeah. people. Uh, yeah. And she does CIA. And then yeah. there's Soul one other Soul is person. from Norway. Yes, Soul. Soul, widely respected. I've seen her at conferences and things. People absolutely love her. Soul Johansson. And? Sure. Maurice and uh, uh, Timothy Ari. Holleran of Timothy uh, Rasa Holleran. Healing. Yeah, Timothy Holleran. Yes. And, and he, he's uh, going to be doing Kirtan uh, with us as well. Mm. And then we have Ari Moshe. Yes, Ari Moshe. That was the person I was thinking of. We yes. had a... And so what is his specialty? 
Uh, well, he's, you know, he's, he's good friends with Jeffrey Green and uh, his, his uh, evolutionary astrology background is, is very uh, deep and powerful. Yeah, and uh, I know Maurice is rooted in evolutionary astrology as well. And for those who don't know, it really is um, a type of astrology that is deeply karmic uh, and deeply loving, I find, because it is so much about understanding your past energy or where you've been or the energy you're bringing into this lifetime and helping you to consciously choose your direction of evolution. That's one uh, way to understand the, the philosophy behind that system of astrology. But I can say that every evolutionary astrologer that I've known, um, I mean, the work is just excellent. The astrology is excellent. But more than that, the spirit they bring to the astrology is, uh, is so powerful as well. So it'll, well, be, it'll be so great. I mean, it'll just be like, wow, so many incredible world-renowned speakers as part of this very special event. And uh, I am going to be doing at the very beginning of January of 2020, I'm doing a cruise event. And so that's kind of like being in the middle of the ocean. With this, you're on land. So that's a good thing too, right? <laughs> you're on land, you're on a resort, you're, uh, you're surrounded by water, yes, and you're having these amazing experiences, but um, all of these people together on a resort is pretty cool, is amazing. We've got the whole resort, and, yeah. uh, and it's right on Flamingo Beach, which is just a beautiful beach. It faces west, so you see the most amazing sunsets over the water every night we'll be drumming the drumming the thing and you know last time of uh, we got three sailboats and we had about you know 60 people go sailing and so th uh, this time we decided to make it part of the event uh so we are going to have uh you know say the last day uh of the event is everyone going sailing and snorkeling and uh we're getting a real experience, uh, you know, of the, the tropics and the tropical fish and, uh, and the whole natural. I mean, astrology is the study of cycles and nature and, and, and the natural laws that govern our existence, our growth, our evolution. And our intention is really to uh, tap into and to feel these rhythms within our own uh, soul life within our within our dream life within our biography and of course we know that 2020 is a very we could say karmic year we could say that this is a, a year I call it the, like the year of the great reckoning uh, where there is definitely um, people will uh, I don't want to say <laughs> well I don't want to say need but I will say appreciate uh, the supporting uh, you know, uh, energy of a group of like-minded souls, like you said, that make uh, supportive connections and go forward. I have had people get married, uh, you know, that met at my events. Mm -hmm. I have, I have, I have so many people that have are made lifelong connections and friends out of these events. They are, like you said, just amazingly very powerful deepening experience for, for people, w whether you were brand new to astrology or whether you've been doing astrology for 20 or 30 years. It's just like, you know, we come together as people and, and we grow and we learn and we share together on many different levels. And so it's just, uh, <laughs> you're going to love it. What can I, I know say? I will. I know I will. Yeah. And um, I mean, I just think it's going to be a beautiful and powerful experience. I uh, will be talking about a few different things, but they're kind of going to be um, centered around my two new books. So the book that my book that just came out, The Body and the Cosmos, I have it right here. Thank you. It was a number one new release on Amazon in New Age Astrology. So that was a very exciting uh, milestone for me. But this book is all about this connection of meditation and how our bodies are connected to the sky. So that's going to be a lot of uh, centered around the things that I talk about. And then my next book, Prayers to the Sky, this is a draft copy of Prayers to the Sky. Uh, with this, it is about, again, this idea of meditation and understanding the astrological sky more deeply based on forging a personal 
emotional and spiritual relationship to it. And I know I'll also be talking about past lives uh, along the way with all of that as well. So we've got a lot of things that I'll be uh, talking about and contributing to this event. And then, but everybody is like, everybody is bringing uh, their own uh, self and their own skills and their own expertise to ultimately be part of astrology rising, like globally, but also personally as well. It is so perfect. I am so looking forward to your planetary prayers. I, Thank you. You know, I've, I, I, I really call and listen and, and, and connect in a, in a you know, very personal way. Mm -hmm. and, and I've also done a lot of group work. And I know that when you get a group of people together, and you're all praying or you're all, you know, I mean, it's just like, it's like a vortex. I always say like these events, they're, they're like uh, acupuncture uh, on, on Gaia. Mm. You know, it's like, you know, it's like we are, you know, coming together to heal not only ourselves, but can be creating community, connecting with Gaia energy and, and really, uh, yeah, downloading I love that acupuncture on Gaia. I absolutely love that because that is kind of like what we're doing, isn't it? We're ultimately helping move the energy of uh, the space that, that we live on, really. And then you're also doing some lunar nodes yes. work. Yes, I'm big uh, on, I love the nodes, yeah. That's going to be experiential, uh, isn't it, in yes, some way? Yes, absolutely. I will be incorporating meditation into a lot of what it is that I'm going to be doing. And yes, we're going to be talking about the nodes and talking about how it is that we can consciously choose our future evolution and understanding where it is that we have been on a soul level. And there is a, a meditation that I do, which is about connecting with your past lives and moving towards your future self that, um, that people feel changed by. It is a very powerful meditation that I have done at a, just one or two events before, but it's always a standout thing. So I'll be teaching about that, understanding the modes in terms of your karmic pathway, and then also we'll be experiencing it together because that's one thing that I've really uh, been realizing very powerfully now is that it is one thing to learn astrology, and we should, right? Engage the mind, learn the skills, uh, expose yourself to different interpretations, because ultimately that way you have the language you need in a moment of a reading, right? When you're in that moment and you are connecting with the chart and you are connecting with a client, it's good that you know all these techniques and you have all this language and you've exposed yourself. But it is really another thing when you have felt the planets, when you have experienced the planets. And I don't just mean that in terms of the aspects you've gone through in your life, but I mean you forged a relationship. And then it really becomes about you honoring the tradition of astrology, which really is, up until very recently in human history, the astrologers were the intermediaries of the gods. Like we were nothing less than that. And it was uh, astrology that was developed very much by spiritual people, by priests. In the East, uh, they still call the astrologers the gurus and the pundits. And these are all ways in which there is this acknowledgement. And I think we still know it on a very deep uh, unconscious level. There is still this perception of astrology as in some way being that intermediary of some divine understanding, divine will, divine energy. And I think that we as astrologers, or especially for me, I feel more and more called to help people to experience that for themselves. So that it isn't that you are looking for someone else to be the intermediary, but you yourself can be that intermediary because you have felt it, you have connected to it, and you have engaged consciously to have the experience of the planets and of astrology um, and so to facilitate that, I, I feel more and more like that's what I'm called to do. So it'll be really exciting to actually do that in real time with everybody, right? Like one of the first times I'll be doing it in this way with these new books that I have out and will be having out by the time uh, that this event takes place um, and focusing more on that. It's going to be personally, on one hand, it is rewarding, but I think and I hope and I believe that for participants, it'll be very rewarding as well. I, that is just, yeah, 
<laughs> that just brought up so much that I could go into. <laughs> yeah, of course. But I am doing, uh, you know, one of my things is dance your stars, mm. uh, you know, that I've, I've done whole workshops on it but we're at least going to do you know uh, hours where we move mars and we put on martian music and we feel into our mars and we do mars in fire and, and mars in water and mars in air you know what i mean and we're gonna and then we're gonna do pluto and move over to venus and it's and and this you know, this this getting it into your cellular body, <laughs> you know, this is really uh, how you can, you know, then I guess when you go to sleep at night or, you know, just, you know, from then on, you just have more of, it's a personal relationship, you know, to these archetypes, to these beings, to these spirits. It's, you know, it's not just this abstract, you know, a little uh, symbol on a printout. It, it, it's, a, it's a living, you know, kind of a shamanic experience, you know, where you are really uh, receiving transmissions. Mm. And, and, and you become a transmitter. <laughs> and, 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 you know, the moon really, she shares with you. Uh, and, and you sit out at night. I, I did a whole uh, night out in the desert, you know, of, you know, just, you know, and you watch, you know, Mars, you know, rise and set. And, and you, like you say, you commune mm -hmm. with these beings. And it's, it's not just an abstraction. Uh, it's, uh, it's not at the point, I don't think science is really at the point of understanding or explaining it. Uh, so, uh, it's uh, it's not really understood, but we are in the matrix, and and these uh, these beings, these uh, these spiritual beings are are very very real, and the and they want to be, you know, they want they want us to speak to them, to reach for them, to listen to them, to participate, to invite them into our lives and our dramas and and they just jump up and down for joy when another human being opens up their heart and their mind you know to <laughs> yes yes you know that oh. reminds me of a few different things one is i remember my former professor jeffrey cornelius he said that you know the gods need us to remember them they need us that way they live exactly. they live on when we remember them but the other thing i'm thinking of is you know one of my uh, I wrote my master's dissertation on a, a mystic named Ibn Arabi, and uh, his work really did change my life as well. And I, I try to talk about him as much as possible because I made like sort of this promise with his spirit um, when I was doing my my master's and writing my dissertation. Whew, it was hard. <laughs> it was so hard. And I would pray and I would say, look, Ibn Arabi, if you help me get this dissertation done. If you help me get my master's, I will talk about you as much as possible. And so I did get my master's, but also because I just love his work so much. He was a, a Sufi astrologer and philosopher who lived about a thousand years ago. And he said that every ache, every longing, every uh, yearning, every joy, every exhalation that our spirit experiences is a new way that the divine knows itself in a way that it would not have had you not been there to experience that exact joy and elation and sorrow and and uh, disappointment <laughs> and so in this way what he was saying is that we are what he called the magnificent breath of the divine we are the embodiment of the divine and the more we allow ourselves to feel and experience and to know ourselves the more it is that that very energy that divine energy expands and grows and knows itself in new ways and i feel like astrology gives us such a powerful way to do just that to know the divine within ourselves in new ways in a way that the divine would not have known itself had we not been there to engage in that relationship and so that's how i see what for me anyways astrology is a spiritual practice and that's how i see what it is that i do as an astrologer as well is that is so uh, it's yeah. just great we're getting to know you nadia i mean yeah. we are so like on the same page we just like use different words to say the same doggone thing i, I know i always say we are the expanding universe 
And whenever we create something new or think something new or do, you know, write or dance or move something new, the, that, that is the universe expanding. That mm -hmm. is, you know, a uh, divine and uh, source seeing itself through us. It's yeah. Ow! Oh, I Just love here. it. You how? Yeah. Well, look, there are a lot of animals going on. I've got animals here in Cancun. You've got animals there with the monkeys and everything. So there's a lot going on there. So I am just very, very excited to be a part of this event. Again, thank you so much for asking me uh, to participate, for seeing me as part of your vision. So let people know how can they learn more, because let me just also say, I have been very impressed by how organized everything is. There is a schedule, there is a location. As soon as you land in Costa Rica, that's it. Everything else is taken care of. You're picked up at the airport, you're brought to the resort, uh, you've got a full schedule there. There's everything. There's yoga, there's movement, there's dance, there's fun, there's learning, there's meditation. Just It is an immersive, incredible experience. And everybody at the resort will be with us, will be astrologers <laughs> with us. Uh, and so yeah. it's a really, experience, a really incredible experience. So how do people learn more about this? Because they're, like I said, it's all written out there. It is established. There is a schedule. Where can right. they get that? Where can they learn more? How can they sign up? Great. Yeah. Um, it's true. We want it to, to be uh, very easy, very smooth. So it's an all inclusive ticket, all you can eat, all you can drink, airport transfers. I mean, the whole thing. Uh, the, the sailing is optional. You know, some people don't want to sail. So we, we made that a separate thing. But other than that, it's a complete total package. Seven days, May 5th to 12th. And the website is very simply astrologyrisingcostarica.com. Very simple. Astrologyrisingcostarica.com. <laughs> we have tiers of tickets. Mm -hmm. uh, there, you know, we had, uh, you know, 50 early bird and then we have 50 toucan yeah. <laughs> and, you know, uh, 50 scarlet macaws. And, and so the, you know, the price is it's uh, the first come first serve. You get, you know, uh, a, a little more of a deal the, the sooner that you uh, register. But um, yeah, we've uh, like you said, we've we've uh, reserved the whole entire uh, resort. It's got uh, 200 rooms. Mm -hmm. So we are. Uh, that's yeah. I mean, that is our max. Last time we had people stay off site and just come for the day, but it's just a. It's really. It's more intimate and connected when you know we're all around the fire at night and we're all together for breakfast, and so we're keeping it. And and we don't want it to be too big. Mm -hmm. So space you know, is I, limited. I think that your early bird tickets, there might just be one or two early bird tickets at this point at the time that I'm publishing this, if there's even any left. They're right gone. Now. They're gone. Yeah, they're, there we uh, go. Actually, Whew, they're gone. <laughs> so that's great. So we know that uh, this is full on. This is happening. The early bird tickets are gone, but people can still get a really good deal if they sign up as early as possible. But regardless, yeah. you know, if you feel called to this, I'm sure that we will see you there and it'll be amazing. Exactly. You know if you're supposed to be there. We don't really need to say too much more. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Capetra, for being here. I am very, very excited that we're going to be doing this together. It really is a beautiful thing, isn't it? Thanks, Nadia. It's so great. Thank you for coming and being and existing. I look Aww. forward to so much more. Thank you. I do too. And just, wow, this is going to be great. And I'm looking forward to meeting you and hanging out with all these incredible people, mm -hmm. incredible world-renowned astrologers, and, and having a really rare and very special experience right along with everybody else. So thank you again for seeing me as part of your vision. And thank you, everybody. Thank you for watching, uh, for being here as part of celebrating yeah, Astrology Rising Costa Rica Calm. I look forward to meeting you there. And until we connect again, take care. Namaste.